what are some of the challenges of ha of having a marketing agency nowadays? What are you seeing out there? Uh, what would you say is one of the biggest concerns or challenges that you're facing? I mean, back in 2016, 2017, it was one of the reasons why it was super easy to sell is there wasn't any, wasn't a whole lot of competition out there. Majority of the business I spoke to um, never dealt with another social media agency before. So it was very easy to sell. Nowadays, if you try to cold call somebody about social media, you're probably A, the 30th person that's called that day. Yeah. And B, they've probably already been burnt by two or three other agencies, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so that, that's the big, that's the big challenge now is trying to increase that trust factor with those leads and prospects. And there, and, and that's okay too, because there's so many ways we can do that nowadays. Right. So, so, you know, so give me a couple of ways you would do that for the audience listening. This is pretty good because I get about 10 emails. Hey, I'll handle your marketing and it's all from Gmail and spam and so forth a day. Uh, you know, Jason, go into that. How do you build that trust back up from someone that's been screwed by SEO, where an Indian company had taken over and sent a couple of reports here and there, but there's really no substance. There's no bite to what they've done for you. You know, it makes selling much more challenging now, doesn't it? When you've been burnt a few times before, right? It's like, well, what makes you any different? So, I mean, first and foremost, one of the best things to do is doing what we're doing right here now, Simon, is having a podcast, being yeah. on a podcast, people getting to know me, getting to know you. Um, you know, I have my own podcast for that reason. It's like, it, it's crazy how many new clients we get that it's only after they close that I realize they've been an active listener to our podcast for six months. They've been oh, wow. subscribed to our blog or email list. So they already knew me before I knew them, okay. right? Okay. One of those intangibles. You can never really put that pinpoint, that ROI on the podcast or the time invested in a podcast. But little do you know, these people are actually listening to you and getting to know you and know you, like you, and trust you, right? Yeah. So um, that is a big one. Also, we're continuously running top of funnel ads, showcasing clips of my podcast episodes to our ideal target audience, getting people watching a percentage of that video content, and then putting them into a certain audience, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is a retargeting audience where we mm -hmm. can send them testimonial ads, mm -hmm. case studies, all this type of great content, which further increases that known like and trust factor, wow. right? And this is something that a lot of these spammy, scammy agencies that just want your money are not doing because they're not investing in their own marketing budgets. They, they, they also don't have, I would say, the, a lot of these say Indian outsource companies, there's so many, uh, they don't have the presentation down right. It's almost a quick, uh, it's almost a numbers game with them versus a proper presentation. But what Jason is saying here, guys, is Jason put himself out there to build trust, loyalty to a following far beyond uh, what normally is a general email or maybe a cold call. So he's really putting himself out there to get that potential client to say, hey, this is me. I'm here. This isn't a fly by night top type of operation. I'm not some Indian agency sitting in Bangladesh or somewhere you don't know about where you're planning on marketing. And we're here. We're a legitimate company. And that's what the podcast seems like has done for you, which is an extra step that you've taken, which you normally didn't have to take. Not many agencies are out there doing podcasts, I would say, out of the conglomerate of agencies. So it's a very smart move, Jason, and I'm proud that you did it. And I think it, it's from what you described, it's worked. Practicing what you preach, putting your money where your mouth is. You know, there's not a single service that we offer that we don't do for ourselves. Right. So, um, you know, whether it's our email newsletters, you know, whether it's nurture sequences for leads that come in through our ecosystem of lead magnets that we put out there, all this type of stuff that we sell to our clients, we do for ourselves to proof the yeah. concept, TikTok ads, Pinterest ads, LinkedIn ads, all this type of stuff, right? You have to do it that way. We can't just go and willy nilly try and test things with clients budgets, right? It's just so what does, uh, first of all, one question, even I'm interested, do you guys also offer services in the United States? I would imagine you have to expand to the United States. Yeah, hundred percent. We work with a, a good amount of uh, U.S. clients, right? I actually prefer, to be honest, uh, I prefer working with U.S. clients to Canadian okay. clients, right? Really? Just, why, why yeah, is that, you know, that's a very good question, and we could probably do a whole nother podcast on that <laughs> question there. But I think a lot has to do. You know, Canadians typically are are more. If I were to just stereotype and generalize. Sure. 
very micromanagers, right? They have to have their hands in things. And where Americans are just like, I feel U.S. clients have a tendency to trust you and your area of expertise, and yeah. they focus on their thing, right? It's they like, like to delegate. They like to make sure it gets done. It's very, it, I've, I've noticed that as well. It could have to do. It could have something to do with just the value of the dollar as well. Where Canadians are a little more tighter with their budgets, uh, mm -hmm. where Americans are a little more like, "Hey, I understand." They understand the concept a little more. Dollar in, two dollars out, and take that risk. You know, more more risk involved, right? So they they they're they're willing to take that risk. Um, where for us, it's like, yeah, I mean, a lot of Canadian clients for the most part are, are they micromanage things much more than, than U S clients, but I, I love the U S clients. We were clients over in Europe. We have clients down in the Caribbean. So, um, so we work with clients across the world. What, uh, what's a typical, let's say I'm a new business. Um, is that your typical client, Jason, or are you looking for a company that has five people? What's a typical budget? Give it, you know, I know. From my expertise, I know budgets are completely uh, different per company, but what is your target client and what is yeah. the entry level there? It's our sweet spot client who we do the best work for and uh, lead to being the happiest clients are the ones that are generating at least $50,000 a month in revenue, which is roughly six okay. k a year. And the reason why I say that is we mm -hmm. recommend any business should be dedicating six to 8% of their annual revenue towards their marketing budget. Okay. So when you do uh, the math, six to eight percent is what Jason is recommending from your uh, revenue, annual revenue, annual revenue into your marketing budget. So, um, so just under, if you're generating fifty thousand, just under five grand, around four grand. Uh, would probably go into your marketing spend. Yeah, three to four grand a month. And that's including everything. That's not just digital marketing. I'll say to clients, hey, look, if you do flyer ads, cool. You go to trade shows, cool. Factor that into that budget, but you should be spending around that three to 4K uh, amount per month, right? And, yeah. and so if you're doing that, you're in a good place and we're able to have a budget where we can actually bring the success, right? Um, just spending, you know, 10 to $30 a day on, on Facebook ads or Google ads, it just isn't going to cut it. Yeah. Um, there's probably too much on management fee to really make a dent. So that's kind of a, a really good sweet spot for us uh, and for our clients. What is a good, you know, if someone's trying to do this on their own or they're trying to hire a company like you, what is a good Facebook spend a day where you find to be effective? Um, obviously there's costs involved per click and so forth, but what are you seeing? Yeah, so it does really depend on, on industry, you know, goals, objectives, you know, are you just doing it for brand awareness? Or are you trying to generate leads? Um, you know, using Meta, Facebook, Instagram, one of the best ways to use those platforms is to use those platforms to get people off of those platforms and into email where you can start mm -hmm. a relationship with them and you own your email list. You know, your Facebook following can go bye bye tomorrow, but you'll always have that email list. And mm. you know, I like to look at it when we're doing any sort of meta marketing is it's almost like you're fishing. You're putting out a lead magnet, something that's enticing to that target audience, getting their contact information, and then keeping that relationship going over email. And excellent. I think the big point here is if you're going to do any type of marketing, you want to extract some type of data. And this at this point is an email, a phone number or something along the lines where your secondary source, which is your sales team or your follow up marketing, including, um, you know, uh, retagging uh, residual marketing can can take over. That's very good point, uh, Jason. I, I appreciate you sharing those things. Um, let's talk a little bit more about what I would say our audience is a lot of entrepreneurs. It's a lot of people that are trying to better their position. I think marketing is one of the most important parts of any business. And something as funny as it is uh, for someone that's had a marketing agency, because my mind's always in different things. And um, um, my mother used to tell me I have like a needles in my butt. I can't sit still. So I create a podcast. I do all these things. But I, I've never focused on marketing so much in my businesses. And I think it's so essential to create this brand um, or create any brand for your business. What are some of the most important uh, avenues a user should take or a business owner should take? Is it on TikTok versus Instagram? Is it all around you have to be? So am I coming to you saying, hey, I, I need to, you have to be present on every single channel or should someone target say just Instagram or Facebook or does it depend on budget for you? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And, and I actually addressed this question in, uh, in the book that I've published last year called drop the mic marketing. 
Um, in, in that book, I talk about, you know, how to find your social media voice. And the fact that I, I think being out on every platform can have its benefits because the users on different platforms are all different. For example, if you're if you have a if you have a product that you're looking to target a female audience from 50 to 60 years old, then you should be on Pinterest. If you're looking to target a B2B audience and you need to be on LinkedIn, um, I always say overarching Facebook and Instagram is a platform everyone should be on uh, because it's the biggest pool of people in the world. You're looking at 2.9 billion people have profiles on Facebook and Instagram. Right. So that's kind of like the, the low hanging fruit. You should definitely be there and apply your your effort there. Now, okay. when it comes to really building a brand, you do have to personally devote certain time to a particular platform. And there's only so many hours in a day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's responding to DMs, doing maybe outreach, outreach through DMs and things like that. Um, I personally like Instagram for that. That's just where a lot of my target audience is, is at. I actually enjoy that platform. Um, TikTok as well, which is a super addictive platform geared towards people with short attention spans. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's true. It, at least in America, it is. In China, it's a completely different perspective on TikTok from what I've read, where they're solving math problems and they're getting highlighted. You know? Yeah, that's right. Right. Well, I mean, look. I mean, the algorithm's the algorithm, right? Yeah. What are all they care about? The platforms is retention time, right? What keeps people on these platforms for longer? So yeah, we could say. Yeah, China is showing more uh, educational content to their user base where a lot of American content is geared towards like frat parties and pranks, right? Yeah, so, yeah like punching your dad or something like this. <laughs> maybe that's what people in each country are interested in, yeah. right? Well, they they're showing what they want. Right? Um, and, and, and I mean, I, I, it's TikTok's funny because you just get so, like I get addicted to it and you walk away from an experience on TikTok two, three hours later and it's like, what the hell did I just do with my time? <laughs> Why did I waste that time? Well, you're waiting for that next piece. You don't want to, it's like FOMO, right? You don't yeah. want to mix miss that next piece of content because it might be something that really captures your attention and could be life-changing. <laughs> In actuality, it never happens. You know, it's crazy. It's uh, social media has gotten into a spectrum of almost like addictive gambling to some. It's it's they can't get off that Instagram. I think, uh, uh, you know, you look at how much time is spent, say, on Instagram versus reading news or whatever it may be. It's it's quite exponential on some of these studies. And yes, it's addicting. Uh, I'm personally one of these people that sometimes catches myself and goes, wait a minute, I need to get off. I rather have stuff to do. Um, I mean, as a business owner, though, you know, I, I do think there's huge benefits in dedicating a small ad spend to getting some paid reach on those social platforms, I whatever agree. social platform, right? Whatever it is. I mean, I personally prefer uh, Meta, Facebook and Instagram because it's the cheapest. You can spend two dollars a day and, and reach a ton of people and let an evergreen ad just continue to run. 